Hi, I'm Dan Marshall. Welcome to my studio in Denver, Colorado. And um, I have an upcoming masterclass on painting snow. Uh, it's called Let It Snow. And really, it's the masterclass isn't really about painting snow. It's, it's a great uh, subject that I can use to teach about edges, color harmony, um, the idea of warms and cools, uh, design, composition, all these things are the snow scene just presents a lot of opportunity to be able to talk about those things in, in a very clear-cut way. But in this video, I will like to give you a little uh, exercise, a little uh, tip on um, the idea of really looking at the warms and cools in a painting and really pushing into that. I've done tons of snow paintings that are all just blue. Like, it's so blue. I'm like, oh, look, it's white, it's blue, it's purple, and they just feel horrible. I've, I, they don't sell. Like they're, they're just not in, uh, they're, not, they're not engaging um, because they're, they're just too blue. So um, what that taught me is to really, really start to look at the idea of the balance of warms and cools, the separation of warms and cools. And uh, that really, really can, you know, create a very nice feeling in a painting. Um, so uh, I've got a couple examples here of, of that use of warm and cool. Um, but let's uh, jump over to the easel. And um, I'm going to put on my apron so I don't dirty my white shirt. Um, but uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at this concept and uh, let me see if I can give you an exercise to uh, start playing with to, to really kind of identify uh, getting in there and working with these warms and cools. So let's start with an overview of uh, my palette and the equipment that we'll be using. And, you know, I talk a lot about warms and cools, and in the very simple sense, I have my palette set up in these are warm colors, these are cool colors, and if we look at the color wheel, these are warm colors, these become cooler colors. So I'm kind of mimicking the idea of the color wheel in my palette so I don't get lost or I don't get confused. Now, as I get into more complex painting, it really becomes a question of warmer than versus cooler than. So in the idea of these warm colors, and you can see here, um, this uh, cadmium yellow is actually cooler than a yellow ochre. So even though they're both warm colors, I end up with a warmer than, cooler than, even though ultimately they're both warm colors. Um, if you want to take a look at the exact colors that I'm using in my palette, I'm not going to get into that here. Head over to danmarshallart.com and look in the materials section and um, there's a photo of my palette and everything laid out there. Um, so, but in that idea of what are warms and what are cools, it really becomes, a, you know, initially, yes, these are warm, these are cool. But when I start painting, I will get into the idea of warmer than, cooler than. So is it, is it you know, because it's, it's all gonna be related to the colors that it's next to. Um, so that's an idea of how my palette is set up and how I keep that separate. So I know when I'm going into my palette, I'm grabbing either an initially warm color or cooler color and how that's related to the color wheel. Uh, for the drawing of this, I'll be using a seven millimeter mechanical pencil, just a HB lead. Um, I'm gonna have a mop brush. Uh, it carries a lot of water, so this is a nice brush for doing uh, my washes. Um, I'll be using a synthetic uh, pointed brush. This is great for calligraphy, for grabbing thicker pigment. Um, it's, it's generally used after I've gotten all my washes established. And then I also have a, this is a sable, um, and it's, uh, it's a natural bristle again, but it breaks up really nicely. So I really, you know, when I'm using a sable, I'm, I'm generally splaying it out and, and getting these abstract marks. But uh, this is great for dry brushing and um, foliage and things like that. So we will be getting into using that a little bit too. Uh, the paper I'm going to use is Saunders Waterford. Uh, this is cut out from a, uh, from a full sheet, but this is a, about a quarter sheet, 11 by 15, and it's got a, uh, it's got a rough texture. It's the 140-pound Saunders Waterford rough. Um, other than that, I have my water cup, my sponge, which I'll use a lot, and I have uh, uh, some various spritzers if I, if I need to uh, moisten things or create extra texture. So uh, let's get right into the iPad and look at some, some references here. Um, I've got a folder called Snow. Um, there's paintings, there's photo reference, there's just uh, snow-related stuff that I'll throw in here from time to time. Um, and this is a pretty good example. So this was a piece done, uh, a plein air piece 
um, that I did in Wyoming. And it's, uh, it's you know, there's some warmth through here. It's very gray, um, but, you know, there is an idea of a cool gray and then a, a warmer sort of browniness for that, se uh, that middle ground section. Um, but then when I came in the studio and redid this, I did a full sheet version of this painting. Um, I pushed those warms just even more uh, to really kind of bring a little bit more balance. So there's a little bit more purple, there's more yellow. So again, I've got these harmonious kind of contrasting colors. Um, but really, you know, push this kind of creates a rhythm of, you know, warm, cool, warm, and then cool again at the bottom. So that's usually the kind of thing that I'm looking for. Um, and as you can see, you know, when I was out there painting, that's that was the impression I got while I was there. And, you know, it's not always great to just paint what's there. So what we're going to look at <coughs> is something that we can really look to push that idea of what is the warm and what is the cool. And um, I'm going to you know, probably actually end up inventing, inventing the idea of that balance of warms and cools. Um, so let me find a good photo to use here. Um, actually, this one's, this is a, I'll just do, I'll start with something fairly abstract for this. Um, so this is a, a scene, you know, it's definitely divided between warmth up here and cool down there. So if I was painting this, I wouldn't really have to stretch that far to think about where are my warms and cools. Um, so let me see if I can find something that I really have to, oh, here's a good example of a blue painting. So this thing is just blue. Um, it, it's, 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 it feels very cold, but it, it's also, it's not very, um, inviting because of, of its coldness. I painted this up in, uh, Carbondale, Colorado, plain air. So, you know, again, when you're out painting and it's cold, sometimes you, you don't initially just make those decisions because you're sort of just trying to get things done. But in the studio, we can really kind of push that. So let's use, uh, this reference here. Uh, this one, I think. We're going to use that. And you may say, well, Dan, that's not a uh, snow scene. Well, that's where the challenge is going to lie, right? So um, that's where the exercise comes into play, where uh, I want to make this into a snowy scene. Um, and I really, again, it's just an exercise about pushing that idea of really focusing on warms and cools and creating a balance and a separation. Um, so we'll just put this over here. And... And there we have it. I've got my 140 pound Saunders Waterford rough paper ready and the rough is going to uh, allow me to create some dry brush, some really nice textures. Now again, the point of this is to push yourself into just thinking about warms and cools uh, and, and related to a snow scene and how that can really create a dynamic effect. The other thing uh, that I'm always preaching is getting away from the idea of duplication of your photo. So I'm using this as reference, um, but ultimately I am, uh, you know, I'm concerned about using this for where the actors are, where I'm going to place things in the painting. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's, I want to create a warm and cool snow scene. And if I don't necessarily have the uh, reference for that, well, I'm going to use something else that I can exploit and change into creating the painting that I want to create uh, because we are, you know, we are creating, um, you know, we're not just photocopiers. Uh, we want to be artists. We want to be creative. We want to push the idea of what we can do. Um, and in this particular painting, I am going to keep this somewhat simple for the sake of what we're doing here, uh, but I do like this old there's sort of a split window truck here. I, when I see those, I have to put them in. They're uh, putting the idea of this old truck, kind of just sitting here in the weeds, sitting in the tall grass. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm also going to think about the design of this. So um, I've got this kind of structured stuff here. It's all sitting in taller grass there. I'm going to move that tree over to kind of give me a nice L composition. Just put that in very briefly. And there's just other trees and foliage back here. Um, I think I will use this to frame out, 
frame out the I will use some foliage to kind of frame out the roof of the of the barn and um, I don't think I'm gonna get involved with I might leave the roof snow co covered um, that may look nice uh, but I will also think about the design of this foreground. So if there's some foot traffic and things, you know, people are doing work around here, maybe I will leave a little bit of this warmth coming up through here. And then um, I'll think about the design and, you know, probably have a little bit of that snow coming down this way. So this warmth is just going to stay in the strip. So we're going to go cool, warm, cool down here in the bottom. And, you know, in a snow scene, it's unique because generally speaking, in a landscape, I'm going to want this ground to be a lot darker to come forward. But in a snow scene, well, it's white. I can't, you know, I want to keep the, all that light. This is all reflecting light. All reflecting light up. So I'll bring this through here. And I think that's going to do it. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to keep this fairly simple. I may end up putting some fence posts in and things, but... Just a nice kind of simple landscape. So here we go. I'll start with the sky. Clean out my palette first. And um, you know, okay, so what I, I, I don't know if I mentioned this or not. Um, so doing this as an exercise, you know, keeping it simple, um, doing it at a, uh, an eighth sheet. So if we tape this in half, just do a, a small, smaller kind of eighth sheet again. Um, to you know, if you're if you're not used to tapping into the idea of warms and cools, it keeps things kind of manageable. Um, so that's always a good place to start. All right, so here we go. And I'm actually, I'm just gonna do what I feel like needs to be done to make this painting work the way I want it to go. Um, so I will start with a, a very pale blue wash, but I'm gonna transform that into warmth. So I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to kind of keep not just warm in the center but that warmth is going to kind of glow out uh, in theory. So let's let's see. So I'll start with just dancing in a nice kind of wash and I'll make sure that's really nice and wet. Uh, Cuz then when I come in with my warm color, I want that to just spill right into it. So I'll come in, I'll start with a little bit of burnt sienna and maybe a little bit of cadmium orange actually. But this has to be very liquidy and I'm just gonna let that push right down into it. Got a runner there. There we go, good as new. Never any reason to panic. And I'll come in with a little bit of a stronger cadmium orange as I come down through here. I'm really whipping paint around today. And I think I will frame out the idea of this house for now. But since this whole midsection is going to be warm, starting with this warmth in the sky, this really starts to act as a nice base for uh, establishing those warm... <laughs> I'm using a lot of the word warm, but uh, establishing the idea of um, the warm base that is going to be uh, for the trees. So, you know, by establishing this warmth, when I start to put a, a warmer green over it, um, I'll already have, I'm not dealing with just white paper, I've already got a warm base, and that will be very helpful. Leave some white there. And maybe I'll just dry brush a little bit, leave a broken edge there. And um, I think I'll just continue straight down. Well, this is all going to be warm here, so I better get that in there too, because I want to get all my light tones in first. This is going to have a slight reddish tinge to it, kind of that rusty tinge. So I can put that in now, just let it mix and mingle. This one will keep white. So we'll have a little bit of that warmth of varnish color. Just let that go in there and mix and mingle. And it's going to be framed in by this green anyway, so I'm not concerned about any uh, uh, spilling over of um, 
of things. So I started cool, but I'm establishing the, that section of warmth through here now. And I am, again, I'm going to try and keep this fairly simple. Um, and anything else down here I can deal with once I get into the second wash. So I'm, I'm trying to break this up into background, foreground, middle ground wash. However, some of this middle ground gets established in that initial initial wash. Okay, so that's basically dealing with the, the uh, establishment of warms. It already looks like a snow scene. I could leave it like this. Um, all right, so now when it comes into the idea of this um, snow being cooler, and I'll get this established now. Um, I am going to want some dry brushy ground on top of here. So I don't want a perfect line of where that's going to start. So I'm actually going to start with just a little bit of water. And I'll skip that through. Um, and now I'll come in with my cool. And I'll start with some blue, maybe a cobalt turquoise, and a little bit of burnt sienna to kind of it'll keep it warm but it's gonna I'm um, cool but it's gonna just kind of gray it out a little bit um, but I do want this to be really light at this point but again this is pushing more of the idea of that cool and I've got this wet edge here so I can dry brush into that and when I come in to connect in because I, I haven't I am gonna put ground a little bit more ground in there um, but you know when it when it comes to snow there's yes it's white but it just needs to feel white and um, the only place you're going to get really really pure paper is in those areas that are catching catching the highlights of the of the sun so i may think about a little bit of a pattern here and a little bit of a lead in there and i'll just dump some more of this down here in the, in the bottom just to bring that down and uh, you know it's um it's snow it's texture i'm not going to do spitting and i'm not going to do spritzing but as this drying i may just dance through a little bit and drop it i haven't changed the mix i'm just pacing it letting it dry a little bit so there's timing involved here but this will give me a little bit of that snowy kind of icy feel and i'm just going to do that and leave it alone and even though there's blue up top here I got. A, I have a rhythm of cool, warm, cool, and the top section of the painting is getting into the warms. the The foreground here is getting into the cools, and that's really again where the challenge or the the exercise lies is to kind of over push that idea. Um, and you know we're working from a a, a spring photo, um, but I'm going to apply this concept of warm and cool into the snow scene to make it work and make it engaging and, and balanced and, and nice. Okay, so while that's drying, I can get right to work into my, my middle ground here. And um, I'm gonna switch to this sable brush. This breaks up really nicely. Um, and I've talked about this a lot. I have a, a, a course on the website um, called Conquering Greens. And it's all about mixing greens. So as you can see, there's no green. There is a cobalt turquoise that I use as a base sometimes, or I use to tint my warmth into whatever green it's going to be. But knowing I want to keep this into the realm of warmth through that middle, um, I'm going to start with actually some burnt sienna. And I'm going to need a lot of this. So I'm going to start with a big mix of burnt sienna, maybe a little yellow ochre. And once I have that warm base, now I'll tint it into the green that I want to do. So I'll, I'll, I'll slowly bring in some of this green. And this will give me a warmer green. Maybe a little bit of red in there. Maybe a little orange. Um, so, you know, I'm just looking for a green that's going to feel not cold. Uh, it's, it, it needs to be on, on the warmer end of things. And more often than not, that ends up being a lot more yellowy orange than than what we might think of with green um, so this will be the base of it and uh here we go so um, i will have to work, work quickly um 
and I'll do a little test. There we go. So I'm going to dance some of this in using the brush to create abstract edges. I will come in and frame this roof in nicely and then break it up that edge. I'll start to bring this down. Uh, and if I want, I can I can soften some of that with some water. Um, if I want to just create a little more atmosphere, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do this. This is how I'm doing it this time. Um, but I'm just dancing in a little bit of water to kind of get some abstraction. I can also use this nice sharp brush to frame in my roof of my barn a little bit better and uh, we'll get a little bit more of this back here and this tree is going to be in front of that so that is going to be a deeper tone but I can get that started there and this is going to stay wet here so I, I will need to come in and drop some nice darks into that to um, actually I can probably even start to bring this up and it'll give me a little bit of a warm glow on the outside of the tree so this tree isn't done it's just there'll be another layer of this but that now connects into that whole shape so as we come down to the bottom here i'm going to want to neutralize this so i'll start with some purple into that and that's going to deepen it up maybe a little more green as we get down into putting in some of the, the some uh, balancing out some of those lights with darks and giving volume and helping to establish this as sitting on the ground. So we need that 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 deep tone to really ground this uh, these shapes. So I'll kind of look around and see where maybe I can pull out some form. And actually, I'll be very careful to cut around there. I'm going to use my other brush here to. Again, this is a nice sharp brush. I can really control the edges there, but if I want a little bit of snow sitting on top of that guy, I can drop that in. This is all, again, dark against light, light against dark, warm versus cool. And um, I'm actually going to grab one more, a slightly smaller sable, because um, I, I do want a dry brushed edge down here where this hits the ground um, a little deeper and I won't have my brush fully loaded. I'll mix it and I'll take some off and I'm going to skip along here to try to leave a nice broken edge where this stuff is all sitting. Okay, that's framed in there. I can leave that as a little something there. All right, so now that's grounding that whole that whole spot and even though there's cool in here it is tied into this warm shape so that idea of warmer than cooler than really comes into play maybe a little bit more of burnt sienna and green yeah, that might be a little too green there so I'm gonna come back in and I'll just keep playing and dancing with this maybe there's some little pieces of winter branch sticking out and um, I'll get into this big tree now and that will be with the burnt sienna and green but also mixed into this other mix that I have here and with a an evergreen like this I, I kind of move the brush the way it grows so I'm, I'm flicking the brush making that shape and I can get through that kind of shape very quickly by just sort of dancing through a little bit more here at the top and I'm leaving holes I don't want this to feel just heavy and completely solid you know we can see some holes through there so maybe I'll scratch out some little little pieces here and there if I have uh, kind of overdone it 
Um, but most importantly, you know, the painting isn't about the tree. It, it's about the whole scene in general. Okay, I've got a big bead of pigment here, so I'm going to pick that up. Don't want that traveling back up. And I think I need just a little bit more dark here. So this will actually be burnt sienna with a little bit of French ultramarine in it, and that's going to give me something even darker. And again, I'll be careful to frame off that roof. And I think, I think, oh, I do want actually to get this gray in here. So this could have been done in the first wash, but it was, you know, I was running out of time. So I'm actually just going to put in a little glaze there just to get rid of the white paper in that because that's going to have a nice shadow in it and I can get a little bit of that gray into this car too. Um, let's see here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna just do a little scratching. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this upside down for a second. And I might just pull out a couple little other pieces of light there. Okay, so warm no <laughs> cool warmth back to cool it's all it is using this as information not as not as uh not as duplicating reality just trying to get the basic idea of what's happening there okay so now it's just the that that's the basis of it now i just need to um get in the rest of this uh, detail stuff and um i do like the way the shadow is hitting this barn. Um, so in that idea of, again, we are in warm, so it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a cool shadow compared to the, the highlight, but um, it is warm. So I'm going to use a little bit of cadmium red and a little bit of cobalt turquoise, and this will put me into a nice kind of like deep purpley color. I don't want it too red or too green. I'll keep mixing until I'm happy. That's a little too thick, so a little more water in there. Tiny bit more red. There we go. That should do it. And single stroke as often as I can. And the shadow is coming down. And we'll use that to frame in the top of this um, grain storage. Break that up for some interest there, but I really need this to frame in. There we go. broken that up just so it doesn't get too dark leave give me a little bit of interest there kind of mimic some of what I'm seeing there and I'll use that same mixture for the the back side here this is all on the shadow side of things so again I'll frame in there cut in a nice edge for the roof leave a little highlight back there and just so this doesn't get all too dark I might I might leave in just a slight idea of a, a window there or something. And I can also then use this to cut in around my split window truck here. And I'll just sort of dance around and I'll leave some, some stuff coming up through there. So I'm kind of doing just a little dancey calligraphy there to um, leave that. Now on this thing here, I don't know what that is, if it's a storage thing or whatever, but I think I'll do it rounded. So I'll put a little bit of snow shadow there and I'll just drop in a little bit of that. And I'm gonna come with water and just soften this to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a 
round dimension. I'll kind of just softly blend that in. Okay. Uh, and this has a uh, now this is a this is a red barn it's got a deeper kind of reddish purple shadow this is a structure that is um, silver um, so I am going to give it a little bit more of a cooler shadow which will basically just be uh, I think it'll a little bit of cobalt into this. So I'm, I'm going to take the same color, but I'm just adding a little bit of cobalt into it. And that will cast this way. And this is a little tricky because it's both a hard shadow and a soft shadow. So I'll put that in there. And then I'm just going to soften up down here at the bottom. There we go. And uh, let's see. So I think just a little bit more. I'm going to use a little bit of yellow ochre here. And this will be very dry brushed, but a little yellow ochre and burnt sienna. That will probably do. And I'll just dry brush in a little bit of some idea that there's some ground showing through this snow. And I'm, I'm just sort of, again, dancing with the brush, creating some pieces that are growing up into their little snowdrift there. And again, this is just to give, again, more of that balance of warm versus cool. And then just a little bit of detail in the truck, and we'll be done. So um, I think I'll, I'll push this just a little bit of a cobalty, turquoisey blue, just to give a little bit more color in here. And again, I'm going to put some cool in here to vibrate against those those uh, warms. This has turned into a little bit more of a tractor looking thing, but that's okay. I'm just going to obscure that a little bit more. There we go. And uh, it's a little bit of a split window, so I'll put just a little bit of the sky reflecting into one side and leave the other side white. And then a little bit of shadow underneath where it's just kind of connected and sitting into this abstract ground there. It's a little too dark. There we go, it's a little more natural. Okay, so last things. And I, you know, I, I've taken this from the idea of the exercise, and I am doing a slightly more finished painting. Um, it, you know, this is still more of a sketch. Um, in I'm not being super careful or trying to overcomplicate things. I'm just trying to keep things. Uh, I'm trying to keep things simple, and just with that idea of looking to really push that idea of warm versus cool, which ultimately will create something more than just a sunny day. I, I can make a snowy day without um, having to actually go out in the snow. Um, okay, so next is gonna be just a couple little more details. Um, put a little bit of a, sh little bit of a shadow on the top here. Uh, a little bit of a secondary shadow on, on the, uh, the 
edge of that. And yeah, I am leaving it snow covered, so I can just, oh, ultimately I'll just leave that white for what this is. Okay, so just a couple little last touches. I'm gonna put the, the chimney back in here with just a little, this is a little bit of June Brune, which is a warm white. Um, I can get just a little bit, I don't wanna use pure white gouache with this, I wanna keep this middle ground warm. So if I use this, uh, a warm white which is it's a June Brune it's just a it is watercolor but it's very opaque um, and I can put in a couple little couple little accents lost the edge of that roof there I can just pop that back in no big deal and um, now I think I will glaze just a little bit more up I'll, I'll pretend like this, there's a little bit more uh, deeper tone in here. Um, and I'll, I'll do this at the end because I do want to make sure I maintain the balance of, um, you know, tone. I don't want this to get too dark. So I'm going to come back in. And again, I'm just going to kind of randomly start with some water. And I think I'll use a little bit of French ultramarine just into whatever this mix is here. Just going to gray it down just a little bit. And I don't want this to be too dark. It's just a glaze into this water. And I can just kind of tickle in some little spots here. I'll let it run the same way I did in that first wash. Um, but this will, again, push it into, a, you know, I want it to get bluer to really push into the idea of uh, the contrast of warm and cool through here. There we go. I'm going to leave a nice light strip through the middle there. And I do like this little edge here. I'll just look for anything that looks strange. And that's basically it. So, you know, keeping it simple. Now, um, if I was going to finish this, I would maybe, maybe keep going with those pushes of warms and cools. Um, the, the main thing is is to identify that first basic idea of I'm going to keep this warm, I'm going to keep this cool. So in the uh, in this guy, I might, I might put a very light idea of the texture of the rim there. Just a little bit of cool in there. Maybe a little cool underneath there. You can push that back a little bit. Um, but that's going to do it for this experiment um, of taking a you know springy color photo pushing it into a winter scene and really concentrating on that idea of where are my warms where are my cools and kind of keep them zoned in that way but also don't be too rigid so in that i because I, I, I want to create rhythm so i do have some cool and then this all goes warm um, you know there is a little bit of coolness in the shadow here but there's warm pops and then this foreground is all very cool and it's not just white paper. So this is just white paper. But, you know, um, I'm also taking license for uh, things that may work good with design. Maybe I'll put a little shadow on there of the, uh, the chimney. And that just gives it a little bit more of telling that the story of the light. Uh, this is probably, you know, this feels to me like of that sort of four o'clock afternoon in light in Colorado where it's, it's that last little kiss uh, before it uh, kind of gets into, kind of right before it gets into golden hour. And it's all over once the signature goes in. There we go. a little uh, exercise in pushing the ideas of warms and cools. Um, I hope you find this uh, little experiment beneficial and you can incorporate it into your, your work and, and give it a try. Um, if you found this helpful or if you'd like to see more of this content, please uh, hit me a like and subscribe and uh, I'm going to be doing some more of these uh, little mini kind of things on YouTube. So um, if you like it, let me know. Um, and if you want to get really deep into more of these concepts, um, this, uh, well, in a couple weeks, uh, Sunday, the um, January 14th, 
Uh, I do have a, uh, a master class that's going to be all on the things similar to this concept with pushing those ideas in snow themed painting, paintings that can really give us lessons that we can take into any kind of subject that we want to do. So there, there will be more on warms and cools. There's going to be stuff on design, composition, uh, creating edges for effect. Um, so there's going to be a lot of stuff that we can work through in this kind of subject that will inform choices that we can make in any subject that we want to paint. So that link is going to be down in the uh, description. Um, hope to see you there. Um, if not, again, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll, I'm going to go out and paint. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Denver. So I'll talk to you soon. Bye.